so we made it the last day of the one and only Ivan part 17. This is pages 291 to 300. I'm so excited. We're so close to the end. All right, go ahead and open to page 291. Let's get to work. The wall. It's a big wall, but it's a big pile of dirt and I'm a big artist. I slap handfuls of mud on the warm cement. I make a handprint. I tap my nose <laughs> with the muddy finger. I make a nose print. I slide my palms up and down. The mud is thick and hard to use, but I keep moving and scooping and spreading. I don't know what I'm making and I don't care. I make swoops and swirls and thick lines, figures, shapes, light and shadow. I'm an artist at work. When I'm done, I step back to admire my work, but it's a large canvas and I'd like to get a better view. I go to a thick limb tree and grab the lowest branch. I try to swing my legs. Ugh. I land hard. It's too big to climb, I suppose. I try again anyway, and this time I pull myself onto the first limb, grasping for breath. One more limb, two. I can't go any further. Perched halfway up the tree, I see my troop still dozing contently. I take in the wall splattered and splashed with mud. Not much color, but lots of movement. I like it. It feels dreamy and wild, like something Julia might have made. From my seat in the tree, I can see beyond the wall. I see giraffes and hippos. I see deer with legs like delicate twigs. I see a bear snoozing in a hollow log. I see elephants. Safe. She's far away, belly deep in some tall grass with others by her side. Ruby. She's here, Stella, I whisper. Ruby safe, just like I promised. I called her Ruby, but the wind tugs on my words. I know she'll never hear me, but still, Ruby pauses for a second and her ears spread wide like tiny sails. And then, with limbering grace, she moves on through the grass. And there's a cute little picture of Ruby down there. Oh, this way. Silverback. It's a cloudy evening, chill and drizzly. Dinner is on its way, but I don't care. At night, we sleep in our den, but I'm always the last to head inside. I've been inside long enough. This time of day, there aren't many visitors, just a few stragglers leaning on the wall that separates us. They point, take a couple photos, then head over to the nearby giraffes. One of the keepers is beckoning. Recollecting, I, I turn to go out of the corner of my eye. I see someone running and I pause. It's a girl, dark hair, lugging a backpack. A man follows behind, racing to catch. Ivan! The girl yells, Ivan! It's Julia! I scramble to the edge of the wide mount that skirts the wall. Julia and George wave at me. I dash back and forth, hooting and grunting, and doing the gorilla dance of happiness. Calm down, says a voice. You're behaving like a chimp. I freeze. A tiny, nut-brown, big-eared head pops out of Julia's backpack. Nice place, Bob says. Bob, I say, it's really you. In the flesh. How? Where? I can't seem to find any words. George's job at the zoo doesn't start till next month. So he and Julia made an arrangement. She's walking three extra dogs to cover my food. And get this, they're all poodles. <laughs> you said you didn't want a home, I say. Yeah, Bob says, but Julia's mom likes my company, so I figured I'm doing everyone a favor. It's, it's a win-win. Julia pushes Bob's head back inside the backpack. You're not supposed to be here, she reminds him. 
Ivan looks great, doesn't he, Jules? George says, or excuse me, George asks. Stronger, happier even. Julia holds out a little photo, but it's too far away for me to see. It's Ruby, Ivan. She's with other elephants now because of you. I know, I want to tell her I saw with my own eyes. We stare across the expense that's, excuse me, we stare across the expense that separates us. After a while, George pats Julia's arm. It's time to go, Jules. Julia gives a wistful smile. Bye, Ivan. Say hello to your new family. She turns to George. Thank you, Dad. For what? For, she gestures towards me. For this. They turn to leave. The lamps that light the zoo path blink on, blanketing the world with, with yellow light. I can just make out Bob's little head sticking out of Julia's backpack. You are the one and only Ivan, he calls. I nod, then turn toward my family, my life, my home. Mighty silverback, I whisper. And then you've got Ivan and his new home. Oh, I hope you guys love the book as much as I did. Go back in Google Classroom, do your last set of assignments. I love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye.